Amigos, senorita, senor, senor, people, 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 I've returned, I've, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I've got the tripod set up so my hands are free to do what I wanted, I'm playing. <laughs> I mean, holding the, the, the stick is cool. That's the whole point of the walk and talk. But I haven't set up the thing to where I can walk and talk and just look at the display because sure my head is in is um is not out of frame. I don't like my when my head is out of frame. Give me a second. Uno momento. Yeah, that's better. There we go. So I don't have to slouch. I mean, I'm I'm relaxed now. I was gonna do a fit check. Can I do a fit check? I think I'll find a way to do a fit check later. I'll take a picture. Yeah, I'll do a fit check later. I haven't done those at all. I gotta get used to doing that so I can, you know, when you're in a pose, you're gonna do your modeling pose and... <laughs> I'll do a fit check later, I'll do a fit check later. Um, yeah, let's talk about the TVA real quick then. I wanna see if the wind is in interfering. If the wind is interfering, I'll just get my mic out. That's another thing as well, because it's bulky. It looks like I'm doing an interview, but there's no one else sat here, so it's like, okay, who is the interviewing? Ghost? Is he a ghost buster? Is he doing interviews with the ghosts? The Ghost of London Bridge. It's gonna be 8 o'clock soon. And I think the sunset is 8.45 or 8.30, one of those time zones. Let's talk TVA, the Deadpool 3. Um, I, I, I never really liked how the TVA was depicted in Loki season one and two. I didn't like it at all. I, I thought it was poor. Um, the back and forth, the behind closed doors and the lies and then Kang. I can't even remember if Kang created the TVA or he took took it over from someone else. I don't care to be honest. Loki being the one who sits there. Oh, it's not, it's my bad. Spoiler alert for Loki season one and two. Even the introduction of Kang in um, what is that noise? Okay. Even the, the introduction of Kang in Ant Man. I had two minds about it. I thought they were going to sprinkle Kang in the MCU the same way they sprinkled Thanos. So I thought, okay, if they're going to do Kang, he's supposed to be another end end level event, you know, extension level event character. A few moments later. Yeah, I think we're going to need the microphone for this one because the wind is killing. All right, cool. Give me a second. Let me see if I can set up the microphone. All right then, we're good to go. We're on the mic, so hopefully the wind wouldn't disturb this one because I was talking with the un onboard. I was talking with the camera mic before, so now I've got the microphone. This should be better. I, I, I got to keep it away from my mouth and away from the wind because the wind is coming right at me. That's the downside of... I guess this, this would be good. I, I don't know how this is going to sound when I go home. I can't hear myself. I mean, I think I can hear it if I plug my earphones in, but I, I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to... Let's just, um, I don't want to stop the mojo. Have I got good battery? Battery life is good. Camera battery life is good. We're good. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Fuck it! <laughs> don't let the elements put you off. We'll do it freaking live. Um, yeah, I thought they were going to introduce Kang and sprinkle him into the new movies or the upcoming movies um, over time. When they said they're going to throw him into Loki 1 and 2, I was like, okay, that's fine. As long as it's a sprinkle or something, then we're going to see him here and there take down one planet or a group of people or maybe challenge the Guardians of, Guardians of the Galaxy. But instead, it just spoils Kang instantly. Season 1 of Loki, season 2, he gets killed in 1. The second one, they're doing different variants and uh, it was just lackluster. Thanos is dangerous. Thanos was dangerous in both um, Infinity War and Endgame. Oh, this, this breeze is serious, but they don't want me to talk. The wind is like, shut your ass up, man. Sick and tired of your shit. Shut your ass up. But with the, with the mic against the wind, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, Thanos was a serious threat in both Infinity War and Endgame. In Infinity War, he snapped his fingers. In Endgame, he foresaw his destiny, he saw his own death, so he was more more feral, I could say, you know, more more um, driven to make sure he got, got those stones, got the gauntlet and did the snapping. Especially after, you know, you, you could say out of luck, 
or just by chance, Gamora, the two Gamoras, you know, information splat, you know, me meshed into one. Then he got to see the future through Gamora's memories and whatnot. So it it it, it makes sense what they did with Thanos in in Endgame. It makes sense how they depicted him because. For someone who's just seen his own death, but still is still the same Thanos who still wants to get those stones. Even seeing his own death and seeing the inevitable outcome of, of his path didn't deter him to still get those stones or attempt to get the stones in, in Endgame. So I love that. I love that. And that looming thread of Thanos in the background from here to there, Guard Guardians of the Galaxy, other movies mentioning him here and there. Another end credit scene. Fine, I'll do it myself. He assembles the gauntlet, even though you could argue that. Um, well, then again, no. No, I was going to say that you could argue that getting the gauntlet didn't make sense. Because he had to go to Itri, the dwarven planet, to make make the gauntlet. But then he probably... That, that's not a hint there. So, when we finally see him put on the gauntlet, you're like, okay, that means he's going to come out of the shadows. He's going to come out of... Um, hiding or come out of his realm or come out of his location and get ready to to do damage so when he finally came on set or came in the scene to do his thing then you could be like okay Thanos is a real threat but when it comes to Kang Kang did not feel like a threat in any way shape or form Kang did not feel like any kind of threat especially when he got defeated by Ant-Man I actually thought the Ant-Man movie would have him, would have Kang kill Ant-Man. Meaning Ant-Man put, you know, put up a good fight, especially for someone who's not a superhuman or super, super soldier like um, Captain America or strong like the Hulk in some way, shape or form. Put up a good fight, but Kang is like, yo, out of all the Avengers I've killed multiple times over, you put up a good fight for an Ant-Man and then finish him. You know, have him kick his ass and kill him. That would have left the audience thinking, okay, so what does that mean for Ant-Man movies? Did he just kill, you know, kill him and show, show us his dead body, not like off camera, kill him good. Disintegrate him, you know, cut off his head or something and then burn him alive. Yo, listen, if you wanted to make Kang a real threat, have that dude annihilate him. So the same way they introduced the TVA and it was rushed and brash, and it didn't make sense. Everyone is thinking differently in a whole system like this. This is a, a galactic, you know, beyond time, beyond your comprehension system or organization or fleet or what or martyr or whatever you want to call them. And you got people bickering or people saying this place is run like this. I would run it like this. You know, that's what Deadpool 3 did with um, Mr. Paradox, whatever his name is. You have people having personal um, agenda in, in, in a place like the TVA where you guys are dealing with things beyond your comprehension per se. You're saying this is a sacred timeline. Dude, I don't understand how, how they wrote something like that and think they could get away with it from people like myself who would, who would call it out quick. It doesn't make sense. The TVA shouldn't have any bickering people, low-minded people, unintelligent people, you know? You should have people who are, uh, who are there dedicated to the role of... of protecting the sacred timeline and and how, how how do you go about employing or hiring or interviewing someone for the tva position how do you go about doing that what what, what background check do you do do you do a psychological background check um spiritual background check emotional intellectual what do you do what does it do? if i wanted to join the tva and i low-key wanted to climb the ranks and then you know, build a small army behind closed doors so I can kill most of the people in charge and then replace them with people I wanted. How, 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 how can someone like that be allowed to enter a sacred space like the TVA? You mean anyone can just go to um, Karmataj? Anyone can just go to Dr. Strange's um, 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 Sanctum Sanctorium? Anybody can just enter Wakanda? Why don't you treat this thing as a serious thing? Meaning no one can just enter here by mistake. Maybe if you have the temp pad, maybe. But people who work here are serious. It's not a gimmicky thing. And that's why I didn't like Loki season one and two. Too, too much noise. Too much noise. Too much cloak and dagger. Then you have the void. You're supposed to be a, a thing that prunes timelines. You prune them and then you don't erase them from existence. Meaning 
you, you re atom re is it automatize you re atomize the atoms convert energy because since they keep saying energy can neither be destroyed or whatever so that way you transform it into something else you change its molecular structure into useful energy to feed something or whatever instead you have a place that most things go or certain things go and then the, the explanation of why the void exists is wishy-washy a, a light is a being that can tamed oh gosh so much so much so much um, inconsistencies so Kang tamed Eliath, and now we have um um uh, what's what's the baddie's name again? I can't remember the name. The the baddie in Deadpool three. I can't remember Cassandra Nova. Now now she she's she's having negotiations with Eliath. This is what I'm saying. These are intergalactic beings. This this is a being that you could probably argue can either be killed. So what kind of negotiation would you be able to have as a non-celestial being and let's not forget Kang tamed Eliath so now you're saying something so powerful something out of your comprehension was tamed by a human being who happened to be powerful because of his technology and knowledge or information you, you, you're just spoiling your your whole um, your whole aspect of your storytelling we can't take it seriously anymore and instead of leaving it leaving the, the TVA and the Kang thing alone or that time light whole nonsense alone in Loki season one and two, you then have the balls to bring it into Deadpool three. And that's your reason why there's a new Wolverine in the timeline. It, it's, it's, it's a shame, man. And the end makes the whole movie stu look stupid because Paradox was very direct with um, Wade saying there's no other way to stop his timeline from disappearing. That's why the higher ups, apparently, even that one, we don't know if it's a lie or not. That's why we pulled you from your timeline. And let's say Mr. Paradox was lying about the whole, um, the higher ups want you to come into our timeline and join the Marvel. Let's say he was lying about the whole thing. What was his motive? What was your intention? Why is it that a TV agent can go rogue and use a temp pad and there's no one monitoring where those temp pads are, are being drawn to? No one is monitoring the 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 um the lifelines of every soldier every tva agent that was killed by wade How, why did it take so long before people acted but it, it doesn't make any sense everyone who is deployed from the tva into any earth any def any alternate timeline or any any lifeline should be accounted for there should be a, a special team in charge of Deployment. So when and when someone deploys, you know, um, so so and so is deployed. James TV two 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 five is deployed to Earth five one two. Oh, his lifeline. You know, he's dead. He's not alive anymore. The footage should have should even have camera footage in the helmet, because this is a serious, serious, serious not not organization, but serious. I don't even know what word to use. Um, system. It's a serious system. Yes, Kang, even when Kang built it, did he just wishy-washy get people to just be there and, and confuse it? Let him, let him think that they were running something important whilst he stood. And you see, if as I'm asking questions now, Damn, son! It goes to show that this whole thing wasn't fully explained, so that way we can understand what's going on with the TVA. And so we, we, can, we, we take it seriously when we're watching the show. I like this one. So we can feel connected to it, not only to the characters, but to the whole system. So we understand this is a very... A vital system in place of things that's in charge of certain things if they go array their contingency plans for things going array you can tell when your TPA agents have been killed Damn! you can tell when they've been deployed from home base to any timeline nothing it's only when the the world ender or timeline ender machine was turned on and that's when someone said oh by the way we have a we have a, a, a un, unauthorized timeline quickener destroyer that's been activated by mr paradox's um sector and even that why do you have sectors that you're not in you, you're just putting any any which person in charge damn son is paradox a new character was was he just pulled in from wherever he was pulled in yesterday why if so if that's the case why why would you pull in someone like him and not seriously vet his characteristics, his mindset, before you yank him into a grand system like the TVA. So these are the things that soured the movie for me. It's not just, oh, because the cameos are too short, or I, I took the movie too serious, even though Deadpool is not a serious movie. And I'm sick and tired of people making that stupid excuse or stupid reason. Deadpool 
is a mixture of things and it's just not comedy for the sake of comedy or non non serious for the sake of non serious no it's a it's a mixture of things you know there's action there's drama there's uh there's emotion there's love there there's concern and the serious elements for example like the the serious element of the cancer in the first movie the serious element of of um, cable coming back from the future, going back in time to kill a child. Those are those are serious things. Those are serious things. Ain't no jokes about that. So if you say, "Oh, Deadpool is a funny, is supposed to be a funny character," well, he is a funny character dealing with serious situations. You know, they put a funny character like Deadpool in real serious situations. So the third movie was like, "Well, you, you might as well just have been a standalone thing," or. Don't don't include him into the Marvel universe. Then just make him jump from from timeline to, to timeline, doing adventure adventure stuff like uh, like Rick and Morty. And e- even that, even Rick and Morty is another. Somebody lost their dog or cat. Rick and Morty, something they could have watched. They could have watched Rick and Morty and said, "Yo, we need to pay attention to see how these guys are doing it because they're killing it." Rick and Morty is like an infinite storytelling. Um, um, system in place infinite storytelling one character could die you replace him and you could say all the ricks are the same so i mean all the mortys are the same so that's why it's okay for one to die because you just replace them one with the other take the imp- take the memory of one implanted in the current in the new one is easy 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 run easy run with no complaints whatsoever because we the audience get it and the adventures continue the storyline continues you know i would have hoped marvel would take would have taken time Marvel and Disney would have taken time to really observe Rick and Morty and maybe got a plethora of the, the writers from them to help them with the TVA stuff, the multiverse stuff, and then the Deadpool stuff. But anyway, I'm done. I don't want to turn this short video into a three hour. I don't mind doing a three hour live when I'm at home, but when I'm outdoors, I want to save my battery, you know, and enjoy my little vlogging thing. But I thought I'd just come outside and record my dismay about this movie. Yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, um, flooding my timeline with why I don't like this movie and I feel that I wanted to talk about specifically about different things I didn't like about the movie that's why I'm talking about the TVA now you know because it's 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 a shame it's a shame I can't take I can't take the TVA seriously Mr. Paradox is doing things behind closed doors and there's no one monitoring Mr. Paradox that doesn't make sense that does not make sense and there are a plethora of TVA agents dead because of Mr. Paradox not because Deadpool killed him. Now, even as I'm talking to you guys right now, I still can't remember whether Paradox was lying about Deadpool being wanted by higher-ups to join the MCU timeline. I like this one. Telling someone that your timeline is about to get distingu- uh, it, uh, extinguished, but we're going to keep you... Uh, how, how, do you, how do you expect someone to deal with that? Your mother's going to die, your father's going to die, your wife is going to die, your children are going to die, but you, you can survive. How do you expect someone to deal with that, whether it's a fourth wall breaking character or not? So it doesn't even make sense that higher ups would have told Mr. Paradox to do that and tell that to Wade. That's stupid. That is very stupid. Some people wouldn't even be able to fathom that they're outside of a timeline and they're multiverses. We know Wade can get it because he's a fourth wall breaking character fourth wall character breaking whatever find different ways to include wolverine and to include the tva and don't write stories about a bad guy in the tva it just spoils your whole setup man makes your whole thing look um poorly written and on top of that the other things that i'm going to talk about too tva i think i'm done with it and mr paradox was really thinking he was the ish you know i've got such a dope plan it's going to work out ah oh. It makes your TVA system look, look real stupid and no one can be held accountable. It's only when that machine that destroys timeline got turned on, that's when people were like, oh, something is off with uh, Mr. Paradox's um, sector. What? You guys should have lifeline monitors for every TVA agent that goes out on the mission. If your system is just for the sake of timeline, you don't care about, like your people are, um, are um, disposable or expendable, that's bad. That is very, very bad. And then, like I asked earlier on, who is hiring these people? How do you hire a, a, a person or an, uh, uh, a suitable um, being to join your TV? Uh, do aliens, are aliens, you know, in the TV as well? Or is it all humans? You know, who is in charge of, of bringing in new team members? Now, if you say they're like androids homegrown on the, on the TVA uh, base, 
that one kind of makes sense because then there's no room for error they can't make a mistake unless they're hacked by another ai intelligence or whatever maybe they don't have a desire to say oh i think the tva can be run better than than how it's run you are one person one person what makes you think your idea supersedes the idea that predates you you are not part of the production or creation of this tva thing when Kang put it, put it in place or, or created the whole thing and set up the whole system, the whole machine, you know, everything from ground up. Who is in charge of that? One person or a multi multitude of people? So you can't just come in and be like, yeah, I think it'd be more efficient if you did it like this. You're one person, man. You're one person. Childish mindsets, childish attitudes, bickering, office drama should not be in the TVA. Don't turn your TVA to the office. Damn, son. Because your audience won't take them seriously enough when it comes to heavy duty stuff. Imagine if Thanos was a, a, a comedian or he was, he was a, a funny guy. He just did jokes here and there. No one would ever take him serious when he snapped the finger. Maybe he, people would have been shocked like, oh, I thought this guy was just a funny dude, but he was, you know, now he's done this stuff. No, Thanos was made to be a threat. They presented him as a threat. And he wasn't just some guy who would sit in his chair. He would go into the planet too that he was genociding half of the people. He would partake in said genocide. So this is a real serious, serious villain. And then, you know, after him, everyone is like, well, when you announce a new villain, how bad can that person be? How bad can that person be compared to Thanos? Since you set the stakes, yo, you set the bar. There's nothing wrong with that. You did a great job with Thanos. Step it up. Or keep it, keep it on the same level as Thanos. Maybe this guy doesn't sit in the chair all the time. Maybe this guy is always on every planet, never sits in a chair. Never. Now, you don't even see him as a king or, 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 or a master. He's, he, can, he can look like the regular next door guy, but he's powerful or she's powerful. So Marvel, Marvel to me has been failing so much. Again, like I said, Marvel is dead to me. This movie is not an enjoyable movie. I will not be going back to see this movie. Whereas Infinity War, I've rewatched that multiple times and I'm set to rewatch it again. Same thing with um, the first Iron Man. Same thing with, uh, with Doctor Strange. I'm set to rewatch that again because I want to do a, 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 a talk about those two characters. Those are my two favorite characters in the MCU. Captain, Ma no, so, woof, woof, I apologize. Robert Downey Jr. as um, Tony Stark, Iron Man, and Benedict Cumberbatch as um, Doctor Strange. What? I like my Thor. What? I like my Hulk. What? But Doctor Strange and Iron Man, oh boy, especially when it came to Infinity War and Endgame. Mm -mm. In fact, just Infinity War alone, I was like, yep, that I, I liked him already, liked him very much. But after those two movies, they, they were like, he, they they were beyond. I was like, yeah. No characters is yet to test them the way the way they they, they wrote the the story for each character. Absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'm just looking at the time right now on the display. All right, we're about to hit 30 minutes, so I can cut it off. I don't want my battery to die. Okay, I still got 55%. That's good. I just want to take a few pictures, record a few shots here and there. I need enough juice in the camera. So hopefully the audio is good on this one. Now the wind has calmed down. I should be back tomorrow, or maybe I should come back here Sunday because Tate. On Saturday, we'll be busy, I imagine. And then I don't think I'm going to get enough room and chance to um, build a vlog. Ain't no way I, I think I can get the same spot tomorrow if I came back. Sunday, because it's church day, week, uh, you know, day of rest for everyone. Everyone's going to be sitting down and on, unwinding and healing from Friday night and Saturday night. So maybe Sunday will be the wise day to come back to Tate and record. Obviously, by then, I think I should have edited this video and uploaded. But yeah, those, those are my my feelings on the matter. And like I said, you're going to be seeing maybe one to maybe, what? maybe two to three videos of me talking about um, this Deadpool 3 movie, especially when, when the buzz is still in the air. And I'm, I'm going to see what YouTube does with these videos because I'm low-key seeing that people are, you know, YouTube is low-key pushing the movie, the, the channels that are talking positively or I, I like the movie, it's, mu it's much better than the previous two. You lying cows. But then again, everyone has their own taste for different movies and whatnot. Some people now who have reviewed the movie, oh, it's beautiful. They've sat down and they're, uh, they're now doing second videos. Yeah, it was cool. But you can, you know, member berries and the cameos, you know, the cameos make the movie. That's, that's not a movie. 
if I remove your cameos, is your movie good? That doesn't make sense. The cameos make the movie? That doesn't make sense. If you're saying people are going to see the movie because of the cameos, that makes sense. Because then you're being honest saying the movie itself doesn't really stand up well. It's the cameos that make it worthwhile. It's seeing Wolverine that makes it worth worthwhile. Of course, these are visual triggers that, you know, that entice you to go and see the thing again. But I'm asking, is the story a substantial story? Meaning the th what they've pieced together, what they've written together, does it work? The first one works. Someone has cancer. He's approached by a hidden organization saying we can help you heal. And, it's, you know, it's, it's I, I can't remember the storyline too well because I don't, I don't want to have to um, get it wrong. But that, that makes sense. Deadpool's not a serious character. So cancer ain't serious. Cancer is serious. Then the second movie as well. Uh, there's a time traveling guy who wants to kill a boy who becomes a villain in the future. And Deadpool's like, well, he, this guy doesn't look like a villain to me. I know evil. This, this doesn't look like evil. Yeah, he's young, but it doesn't look like he's got, you know, um, uh, omen tendencies or, or, or the, the, the spawn of Satan tendencies. When he gets his first kill, then he, be, he starts to get a taste for it. Okay, then we need to protect him or maybe stop him from doing the first kill or, you know, find a way to, to save him. So that way, if we can stop the first kill, then maybe the future gets saved. We can... We can change time. We can change that timeline once we, we, we apprehend him or, or stop him from doing the first kill. And then, okay, first of all, if he's angry or if he's killing people, wh why does he, what triggered him to become this way? Then you realize that oh, the villain of the story is not necessarily the, the future bad guy who is a boy or the grown man who travels in time from the future to the past. Because technically, you could say that's a very bad man. You're a father, but you're traveling from the future to kill a young boy in the past. That's bad. Then you realize, oh, the real villain of the movie is these people who have taken um, a fire starter into, into this orphanage or into this organization showing up as an orphanage, looking like it's protecting children, whereas behind closed doors is torturing children. So the environment plays an important role in terms of your origin story. This is how this young boy becomes this villain in the future because of his environment and his origin story are, it, or origin story is this people torturing him. Beautiful story. And then people say, oh, Deadpool's under serious movie or serious character. That to me is very serious because you're learning something from that. Don't judge a book by its cover. Maybe this guy wasn't just born bad after all. It's the things that were that, that was done to him as a child that, you know, he just loses his shit and he's angry. He has every, has every reason to be angry. You tortured me, I'm going to torture you back. You know, you're torturing someone because you don't understand. So it's, it's a little, it's this very strong, not a little, but a very obvious allegory of how um, the dark side of humanity. And your Deadpool 3 comes out, that's when people want to start mouthing and saying, oh, Deadpool's not a serious character. You people are funny. You people like to use those terms when, when it best suits you. And it's stupid very stupid anyway i'm done talking let me go home and edit this video because um i don't want the battery to die is that a motorcycle or bicycle it's a bicycle no it's a it's a thing scooter anyway boys and girls we outing let me let me sign off from this recording i've enjoyed myself sunset is looking beautiful let me go take these pictures man let me go take these pictures man ladies and gentlemen I have been your one and only host, the Cosmic Jedi, signing out. Mm. Sorry, I looked away quick just to see the time on the, on the display. I've never looked away from the camera when I'm doing the, uh, mm, when I'm doing the lip quiver. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for enjoying these videos. If you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet, then maybe you should. And if you don't want to, you shouldn't have to. I don't want to make you or force you or trick you into subscribing, liking, and sharing. I don't even like talking. I don't even like doing that, um, that plug as well. Like, share, and subscribe. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't want to have to. If you feel called to, you are most welcome. If you don't feel called to, you are also most welcomed. I like this one. Also, I'm close to some restaurants right now, and the food is smelling delicioso. It is smelling delicioso, man. Eh? And when you know you haven't eaten in a while, when food starts smelling nice, that's, that's a sign that you hungry hungry. You better get your ass on home. All right, peeps, let's get out of here, man. I'm done waffling on. It's already an hour long video.
Deuces. And here comes the nightlife. I hope the camera is doing it justice because god damn this is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 